Hi, this is Elliot Haspel. Welcome to another edition of Best Practices Weekly. Today we're going to be talking about combining writing and math, and this comes from an article in The Reading Teacher in which two Brigham Young University instructors talk about ways to do this, because writing is often integrated with social studies, with science, with other subjects like that, but actually is not often integrated with math. But studies have shown that when you do combine writing with other subjects, students' achievement actually goes up in both. So if it's a big opportunity to help students both in their math and in their writing. And the authors propose a bunch of different possible strategies for doing this. So what I'm going to do is go through them. The authors break these into two different categories. One is writing without revision. These are usually quicker, less sophisticated writing pieces. And then uh, writing with revision, which is the opposite. So the first of these writing without revision ideas is the idea of learning logs. And this is something students can do either at the very beginning or the very end of class in which they're reflecting on what they learned either the day before or during that day's lesson and then sharing it with their peers and potentially with the whole class. And by having students reflect and process what they're learning and think about how to write about it, they're learning how to talk about math, they're learning how to really deeply internalize what they've learned, and ultimately the authors talk about how classrooms where this happens in tend to see math discussions getting much deeper and richer. A second of these ideas is think-write-share, which is a variation of the popular think-pair-share method, um, and it sounds exactly what it sounds like. You pose a math question, you give your students a minute or two or three to write down their answers, write down their thoughts and their justifications, and then share with partners or share out with the whole class, again giving them a chance to both practice their writing and to reflect and really process what they've been learning. And the third of these is the idea of note-taking slash note-making, and what this means is that when we're giving students either a set of guided notes or we're giving them a paper that they are following along with what we're doing on the board or on the overhead, I actually have them fold it in half. The left side becomes for following along with the teacher, and the right side becomes for jotting down their own thoughts, notes, questions, uh, connections that they make. And the authors give the example of a fifth grade student who, in a lesson on integers, wrote down in the right hand side things like, It's weird that negative two is bigger than negative five. And later on, he actually created his own analogy to help himself under remind himself about how integers worked involving piano keys. So it really gives students the agency over taking their own notes and creating their own ways, their own connections and think, ways of thinking about the math. Then there are these ideas of writing with revision. And the first of these is the idea of doing a shared writing piece. And this is when you get the whole class together, you get the big chart paper, you're doing it on the overhead, however you want to do it. But you're as a class coming up with, say, a letter about the geometry unit that you've been doing, what you've learned about geometry. And since students are offering suggestions, they're revising, they're editing the piece with you, with the whole class, they're getting lots of writing practice. And they're also, again, learning to talk about what they learned in math. A variation on this is um, something called the class book, and this is when you could either number the sentences or the paragraphs in that shared writing piece and have students go off individually or in pairs and come up with uh, more elaborate pages about that and then combine them so you have a whole class book about what you guys have learned in geometry. And a way you could do that also is doing a class book of word problems. So everyone come with a word problem involving probability in a probability unit, and then you've got a, a class book of, of um, well, well written word problems. And the third of these ideas of writing with revision is something the authors take from another teacher, and it's the idea of literally doing stories about math. And so uh, these are fiction stories going through the full writing process, but they talk about examples where students have written about the amazing subtracting frying pan or the hexagon adventure. So they're doing all of their good writing, but they're also practicing and uh, rec recalling what they learned about in math. And so, they also conclude by talking about the fact that these are just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, there actually isn't as much out there as you would think about integrating writing and math, so they encourage teachers to use their creativity, think about a way we can combine the two subjects, because ultimately it's going to make students better writers and better mathematicians. Thanks for watching, and happy teaching!